Howdy, y'all. Hello. I hope you're having an awesome weekend. It is Super Bowl weekend for football, or I should say American football here, uh, tomorrow. But uh, I'm over here learning about actual football, you could say, right? Football in Europe, as we call soccer for some reason here in the U.S. And we're looking at understanding soccer or football in Europe in Four Simple Steps, a guide for Americans. This is made for a guide for me. And uh, I will admit, I played some different sports growing up, but I never got to play soccer. I don't have anything against it. I've just never gotten into it, right? I've never found the time of getting into it. And I feel like it looks pretty energetic, pretty wild, and, and a passionate sport. From what I saw the other day, looking at some crowds and ultras at, uh, well, football games throughout Europe, it was pretty intense. This is from Pen and Paper. It'll be linked in the description down below so you can check them out. Let's just dive straight into this. I think I have a lot to learn. As far as I know, everyone tries to get the ball and kick it into the net, but uh, I'm sure there's a little more to it than that. Let's take a look. Ending soccer in Europe in four simple steps, a guide for Americans. Although from the outside, it may seem complex and confusing, to understand how soccer works in Europe, you really only need to know four things. Number one, each country has its own soccer league. Season each country has its own league. Okay, see, I didn't know that. I just arrogantly assumed it was like one league where they all face each other. Okay, that's kind of cool. Teams run from August to May, in which each team plays every other team twice, once at home and once on the road. Games are divided into two 45-minute halves, and when the game is over, the winner is awarded three points, the loser zero, and in the event of a tie, oh. each team gets one point. Oh, so you don't go by wins and losses necessarily? It goes by a point system. And then you each get a point for a tie. Okay, so that's different, right? I'm used to, I guess, obviously, American sports like baseball, football, basketball, you go by your record, right? Your wins and losses speak for themselves. It's kind of interesting going with a point system here. After each team has played all the other teams twice, the team with the most points is crowned champion of the league. They wow. get a big trophy, a parade, and the season is over. There are no playoffs. There's no playoffs. So, but more on that in a minute. Before the books... So you just get the most points throughout the regular season, and, they, and that's it. You win. What? I could have sworn there were, like, big games, weren't there? Like, I don't know what you would call them. Bowl games, cup games, something, right? Books are closed on the season. There is still one small bit of housekeeping to be done. Number two, relegation. We'll use the German League as an example. Every year, when the German League has concluded and the champion has been crowned, the three teams with the least amount of points are kicked out of the league. This process is known as relegation. The three Whoa. vacant spots are subsequently filled by the top three teams from Germany's second division. And unlike, say, baseball in the U.S., teams in the second and subsequent divisions are not owned by teams in the top division. Imagine if the Pittsburgh Pirates or Oakland Raiders had to fight at the end of each season just to stay in the league. What if instead of coasting to the bottom for better draft picks, they were fighting to the bitter end to avoid the $40 million revenue loss that relegated teams suffer in the first year alone? <laughs> okay, I did not know that. That is actually pretty freaking cool. I like that. Okay, that brings a whole new level of league-wide competition. If you're at the bottom of the totem pole, you actually really have to fight and scrounge for your position. Um, as a Bears fan, right? Chicago Bears right here. <laughs> like the NFL is the opposite. People or, or teams rather at the bottom are that are having a horrible season. They just play horrible on purpose towards the end because they get rewarded for being bad. They get high draft picks the next year so they can get some better players. This is a whole nother level. Magic getting kicked out. So there's teams you could follow, and if they do bad, they could just be gone. And then the next year you're watching, they're not there? That is actually insane. And I like it. Uh, I also like how there's a fact where you could be a team in, I guess, what would you call it? Like a lower league or an amateur league, and you could claw your way into the big time. Is that is that a correct assumption? That is freaking cool. Because he's right, baseball, football, like major sports, the teams at the bottom, there's really no incentive to try hard 
you can just kind of throw the season. I mean, they'll never admit that, but come on. There's no incentive or there's no fear, rather, of like being kicked out because you're bad, right? You just get rewarded with good draft picks and stuff, and then you can rebuild and whatever, try and get better. And, you know, that system's not terrible. I mean, I get that that has its pros and cons as well. At least you know, like, you still have a spot and you can get better and claw your way to the top. But I, I admittedly, I think this is really cool. That gives them incentive to really try every year because if they don't, they could get kicked out. Not to mention the fact that in England, nine different teams have gone financially insolvent within <laughs> five years of relegation. Damn. Okay, interesting enough, you're thinking. But what about that whole lack of playoffs part? Number three, each country also holds an elimination style tournament referred to as a cup. But instead of being held after the nine month league is over, Cup games are scheduled in between league games, normally in the middle of the week. Oh, wow. One additional perk about the cup system is that teams from all levels, down to semi-professional and even some amateur teams, Whoa. are invited to play. And if they do well, can progress, and occasionally even knock off a top team. So every year, what? these midweek elimination games continue until there are only two teams left who play each other in the cup final. Again, really cool. So you could be on a third or fourth level down, you know, a, um, amateur league but you could you could get a chance to play against like the pros at the top I think that's actually really cool I've always been a fan of like you know upsets and underdogs where you can you know have a bunch of more quote-unquote normal people getting to play against pros that really never happens much here in the U.S. but I, I've always liked that idea like what if uh good college team just for an example got to play against the pros just to see what happens it, it might be pretty fun in a sense this is kind of like that you've third or fourth level amateur teams could play a top team i think that's cool right you never know you might see an upset it's i think it's good for them they get big experience versus pros and if not if the pros win well at least they're solidifying hey we're the pros for a reason we're top level you know either way you look at it, it's kind of cool right after 90 minutes a cup champion is crowned, they get a trophy, and a parade. So, between the league and cup games, we get a great picture of who the best and worst teams in each country are. Agreed. But wait a second, you ask. What would happen if the best teams from each country in Europe all got together and played each other? Good idea. Number Sounds four. cool. The resulting <laughs> competition is called the UEFA Champions League. Ah. It is without a doubt the single greatest club competition of any sport anywhere in the world, period. Uh, Think that of the sounds NCAA fun. tournament but with better quality of play, more than double the fan base, and quadruple the enthusiasm. Wow. And yes, Europe even has their own version of the NIT as well. So, wow. through a complex and drawn-out process, teams from all over Europe compete just to qualify for this tournament. And starting each September, the top 32 teams are put into eight groups of four. Each team plays the other members of its group two times, once at home and once on the road. Okay. Come December, the winner and runner-up from each group move on to the knockout round. And this is where club soccer is at its finest. Teams are paired up individually and again play one home and one away game, with wow. the winner from each pair moving on to the next round until only two teams remain. The Champions League final is then held as a single game each year in May. Wow. And unless it's the World Cup year, this is the most important soccer game of the year. So they play multiple games in the first rounds, but then that final game for the final two teams is one game. Is that is that what I heard right? Um, so that gets all on the line, big time pressure, which is kind of cool. I don't mind the multiple games in, in the other rounds, but when it comes to that final round with the final two teams that survive, I think one game is always better. After 90 minutes, a champion is crowned, the trophy is awarded, parades commence, and all clubs go on break until the madness fires back up again in August. So, to review, number one, each country has its own league. Number two, the worst teams are kicked out of the league and replaced by the best teams from the next division. Pretty down. crazy. Number three, throughout the year, each country also holds a playoff type tournament called a cup. And number four, the UEFA Champions League is a tournament involving all of Europe and is the most important competition in all of club soccer. And so they have the cup games throughout the year during the season, right? They also have the UEFA Champions League tournament during the season as well. Is, is that what I'm connecting here? Damn, that's a lot going on. You got to understand, this is all new to me, so this is a lot at once. I, it's not that hard to follow, but it's like, it's just kind of mind blowing. I, I got to admit, right? I didn't have any expectations going in of of good or bad, but this is exceeding what I thought. Like this is exceeding my expectations. This is pretty interesting. 
I, I did not know the leagues and, and how everything works was structured like this. I pretty much only knew fundamentals, right? That you have players on the field. I know there's fouls and tackles and, you know, you pass the ball around and obviously your goal is to score a goal, <laughs> right? And score the most to win. Duh. I knew that. I also knew that there were 45 minute halves, you know, 90 minutes total and that it can run past that. Correct. Sometimes. It's about the extent I knew. I've seen games in passing over the years, I, barely. I'm talking about seeing few minutes of games at maybe someone else's house in the background. I've never sat down and watched like a whole game. It's just not something I've been able to do. But I have to say, this was really good, actually. This was a lot of good information at once. And I, I can see how this could be a really great spectator sport as well. I mean, obviously, amazing for the players highly competitive. I can see that. And and especially when you're dealing with this point system, when you're dealing with <laughs> if you're at the bottom, you can get chopped out of the league. Like that is crazy stuff. I had no idea it existed like that. Then the fact that you have these great competitiveness, uh, high, highly competitive tournaments where you have the best of Germany versus the best of France versus the best of Italy and, and so forth, right? That sounds like it would be really cool and really like c crazy and adrenaline filled. I bet those are high stakes games. So, uh, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm actually impressed for sure. I mean, that was soccer in four simple steps, a guide for Americans. I'm sure there's even more than that. This was just a literally a three and a half minute f super easy guide, right? I'm sure there's a lot more to it. But I tell you what, for being an easy guide there with just the basics, like I said, this is pretty complex, and this has got me very intrigued. So I can't wait to see your comments on this. Anything you would like to point out, I'm going to read, and I do appreciate. Uh, you know, it's a theme on my channel. I, I might put NFL fan in there in the title for the algorithm, right? But I was a lifelong NFL fan. I'm not as much anymore, I'm, I'll admit. I don't watch most of the games anymore, whereas I used to watch religiously. I used to play the video games, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> um, I feel like the league has gone downhill. I feel like NASCAR. I put those in my titles. I'm not the biggest NASCAR fan like I used to be, again, 10, 20 years ago. I feel like that sport's gone downhill. So with a lot of American sports kind of being up and down and not as great as I remember them 10 or 20 years ago, I'm open to new things. I've really taken in Formula One. I've really taken in Rally. I really lean towards Rally even out of that matchup. Uh, you know, taking in new cultures even in the form of sports, uh, I feel like is pretty interesting. Yeah, this was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. That's all I got for you. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, y'all, have a great weekend. I'll catch you later.